Hello and a very good evening and welcome to the 2016 Big V VYC Women's Grand Final. We have made it through an enthralling season and it comes down to this tonight. It is the Bulleen Boomers at home taking on the Melbourne Tigers, old adversaries for many, many years and tonight they clash in the best 23 and under competition in the country. It is the VYC Women's Grand Final. Justin Nelson with you, joining me tonight up in our uh, luxurious uh, surrounds here at uh, East Doncaster. Steve Chalmers, a very good evening to you. The teams are about to be introduced, by the way, but a good evening to you. Good evening, Justin. Welcome to the Victorian Youth Championship Women Grand Final. It's uh, good to be at an old stomping ground here at East Doncaster, but um, as well as yourself, we're joined in some elite company. Well, uh, so I'm elite, is that what you're saying? All right. In including yourself. Oh, but, uh, right, okay. Man to my left and right, I should say, elite company. Well, he had nothing on tonight, so I dragged him out for a look at a game and stuck a headset on him. But it's a very good evening to coach of the Deakin Melbourne Boomers in the WNBL out here watching some young talent tonight. Guy Malloy joins us. Good evening to you, Guy. Uh, good evening, Justin and Steve. It's wonderful to be here. You didn't have to drag me at all. What a great <laughs> event. Looking forward to it. Well, we're going to see two very, very talented young teams here tonight. There's no doubt about it. It's a uh, cracking competition, of course. Uh, as I said in the intro, the best 23 and under competition in the country, bar none. And tonight we've got the two teams who have made it through. And for... Uh, Bulleen, who will be wearing the blue tonight, currently Melbourne on your screen uh, being introduced, but for Bulleen, who are about to be introduced, it's their third consecutive grand final and they're yet to win one. So hopefully for uh, Bulleen and their fans, it's third time lucky tonight, Stu. Yeah, that's right. Uh, two successive grand finals at Knox and uh, obviously weren't able to get the job done there, but it's their first home grand final and um, a new opponent. Hopefully all the best for them. And they got here, of course, tonight after defeating Dandenong in the quarterfinal by nine points at this very venue. In the semifinal, they defeated Ringwood by five points. That was uh, on foreign soil. And in both of those games, they had barnstorming last quarters, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. Common theme to Bulleen's pretty much second half of the season and finals run. Uh, Houdini, they like to call themselves these days, coming from behind in fourth quarters, sometimes by as much as double digits. And, of course, as you can see on screen there, uh, a very familiar face is the coach, Gary Fox. And, uh, Guy, when it comes to coaching uh, at all levels, Gary Fox certainly knows his stuff. Well, what a great career he's had in uh, most recently junior basketball around Victorian circles, but also a very accomplished uh, NBL coach and a championship coach at WNBL level. So two teams lining up there down on uh, the court, ready for the playing of the national anthem. So there it is, there's the national anthem, wherever you may be watching uh, around Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, or indeed other parts of the world. Welcome tonight. It is the Victorian Youth Championship Women's Grand Final for 2016. In our picture there, of course, the Bulleen Boomers. They are on their home court. They are taking on the Melbourne Tigers. We mentioned, Guy, how Bulleen made it through. Melbourne in the quarterfinal defeated Knox by 19 points, which was a, uh, a very big win against uh, a formidable opponent. And then in the semifinals, they defeated Nana Wadding, uh, a very well-coached team by Paul Flynn down there at the Spectres. Beat them by 23. Uh, so they, uh, they're in a bit, fair bit of form at the moment, the Tigers. Well, the thing would be uh, they would arguably have the best backcourt in the competition and uh, 
with Monique Conti and Brianna Babich, and those two guys are going to touch the ball first pass in bounds. So if you've got a dominant big, you can do a lot of things to try and keep the ball out of their hands with guards. It's very, very difficult. So if, uh, if those two players are able to exert their uh, influence on the game, it'll be a difficult matchup for Boleyn. Well, they scored 52 points between them last week, those two, Monique Conti and Brianna Babich, numbers one and two respectively. You'll see them uh, out there tonight. And, of course, Pauline have their own stars as well. Steve caratasari has been in good form. Yeah, she certainly has, obviously, a, a Victorian state player for Vic Metro. Um, won the championship in the under-18 competition this year. Um, and she's come up big in both fourth quarters uh, before this grand final to take them to tonight's game. Uh, also alongside her has been some pretty formidable players in Sam Moody and Shania Patea, uh, more so in the front court with rebounding and defence alike. And, of course, Abby Zhang is a, a wonderful player as well. We're going to get a, a good look at her tonight. Shania Patea, as you mentioned before, we can see her on screen. Keep an eye out for the number 32. Melbourne, we mentioned their two stars. Brianna Babic, uh, Babic has uh, certainly got the power to put points on and put them on in a hurry. Last week, she scored uh, 25. She had six steals and seven rebounds. She had 20 points in that quarterfinal against Knox. Had four steals in that game as well, guys. She's very, very good on getting, that go uh, getting the ball back for her team, isn't she? Well, you can't teach quickness. Uh, very fast end-to-end -end with the ball and her instincts to go on pressure and uh, take away the vision of opposition guards is very, very good for a player so young. And how about this young lady right here, averaging 22.5 points a game, five rebounds, five and a half assists, shooting at nearly a 50% clip. She's had an incredible season, not only for this team, she's been playing at senior ranks. She uh, won a gold medal with the Sapphires in the under-17. She was an all-star five there. And, of course, for you, Guy, uh, not that long ago, she uh, signed her uh, an unbelievable experience for her coming uh, a week after returning from overseas, but uh, signed on for her first crack in the WNBL for a 16-year-old. It's quite amazing. Yeah, really amazing stuff, but well-deserved. I think a uh, young kid that... Uh may have thought that Christmas comes three times in a year. It's been a wonderful, wonderful year for Monique. Uh, but look, uh, she plays like she's 20 years old. I mean, she's got great vision. She has a really good left hand, a really good right hand, passes and handles the ball very well, both sides of the body, finishes very well, and a really good at perimeter shooter. So. She has plenty of tools that we think can make her a WNBL player right now. And a few of the players that we've mentioned uh, in this build-up, obviously Monique Conti, Brianna Babich, and also uh, Cara Tassari. Um, we, we mentioned Conti has, uh, has signed on to play WNBL, but the other two have also been going through uh, some tryouts at the moment for development player positions with the, uh, with the Melbourne Boomers. So we've got some genuine, genuine young class on the court tonight. Yeah, we're really blessed by what's in front of us here. It's going to be an exciting game, and uh, that's the beauty of uh, Melbourne and Victorian basketball. So uh, competition always makes you sharper. Competition makes you better, and uh, the fact that these girls were able to go head-to-head -head so often um, means we have the product that we do. Now, Steve, don't sit on the fence. Who are you going for? Well, uh, I think I tipped against Bulleen for the last two weeks, and they've shown me up t twice in a row, so... I can't go against them on the third occasion. Home floor, home court advantage. Uh, it's going to be a tight one, but um, maybe another come from behind win. Typical bullying fashion by two points. Well, I'm going to go for the Melbourne Tigers tonight. They're in uh, wonderful form at the moment. We've seen that in the finals with 20-point-plus wins in their two games. Guy, your tip? Uh, well, Bulleen let me in the door. I better support them. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. Well, we're just about ready for a start. Settle in. You'll enjoy this one. Jess Harley about to go in the jump up against Shania Patea. And we are set to start the VYC Women's Grand Final as we uh, get going. Jess Harley, of course, uh, a former Waverley girl, now playing for the Tigers. We're underway, and it comes down to Monique Conti as the Tigers get first touch here tonight to start the Grand Final. Babich and Conti get the first possessions. Straight away, you see the backcourt of Melbourne Tigers going straight at it. Ball in the hands of Lucy Purchase, of course, a famous name in basketball. There's Babich looking on the drive now. Underneath, flicks it back out. Little give. Not a bad shot there from Phoebe Gaze. A miss. It falls back into the hands of Conti. And Melbourne will start again one way, then the other, forcing her way inside. 
eventually comes back. Working, geez, they're working down the right side a lot here, but they eventually get a nice look at the basket. Phoebe Gaze puts it away with her second attempt, and the Tigers get off to a good start. They're up by two. Yeah, really early, you can see the vision that the Melbourne guards have to drive when they're cut off, that they make the, uh, the pass to the open player. Pauline with a chance now, working the ball inside. There's a call there. Early foul. It was a nice block there by the Melbourne defence. And I think just early on, you can tell the difference. Melbourne just pure in passing the ball, finding an open shot. Bulleen a little bit stagnant. Ball in now. Theodore. Baseline, brick wall, and it'll be a Melbourne ball. Good defence there by Phoebe Gaze. And the Tigers come up trumps. Jess Harley to bring it back in. So a nice defensive start there for the Tigers as Conti brings the ball back down the floor, wearing the uh, red feathers or red ribbon in the hair. Ball inside. Right on the whistle there, the referees. That one will go against the Boomers. And the Tigers will get the ball underneath their own basket. Here's Lucy Purchase again. Ball out. High. Back inside. Knocked away. Boomers to come back down the court. Up and away. No, they turned it over. And now the Tigers look out for Babich here. Has a quick look at the basket. Now sends it around to her partner in crime, Monique Conti. One way, then the other. Forcing her way through, finding some space. Back out to Purchase, now back high. Babich forced on a quick shot, off the front of the iron, and out of play it'll be a boomer's ball. Only two points scored in the game so far. Both teams stepping up early in defence, Guy. Yeah, Bulleen doing a really good job to move their feet and cut off the initial lane to the basket. And uh, Melbourne having some struggles feeding the post. Let's see what the Boomers can do here. Long to Sari, puts it away. And the home team is up and running with their first basket of the game. And it was a very, very clinical finish by Kara Tassari. Purchase back the other way. Conti in the paint one way, then the other. Forces it back out. Back to Purchase. Can't drop the shot. Up high. Zhang off to Sari. Away again. Forces it up the floor very quickly. And there's a foul. No, there's a travel call. Good pick up by the ref. Pauline lead this one. 3 2 early. And as is the case for most uh, Melbourne Knights during winter. The crowd's come in very late, but it's uh, nice and vocal here tonight. Steve, your thoughts on the start? Yeah, look, uh, we've assumed both teams would be fairly nervous coming into a grand final. Obviously, Bulleen had those last two years of experience, but I think Melbourne's probably the team that settled the, the quickest. Well, they've had their chances. They've uh, had a fair bit of uh, penetration through that paint early. And they've had a couple of good looks, uh, short corner jumpers, Guy. They've, uh, they've seen a bit of it early, but they've only been able to convert once. Well, the Bulleen D uh, has collapsed well to the level of the ball. And uh, as I mentioned, they've done a good job to throw the ball out. If Melbourne connect on their perimeter shots early, they'll look OK. Now the Boomers into attack. Patea inside, deflected away. Tigers back the other way. This is Conti. Yet another error feeding the post. It's a difficult skill and players this young can struggle with it. Conti's found a way through. Ooh. Collected a body on the way through. And uh, I think it'll be a baseline ball. It just, is. Just that speed and quickness from Conti. You're just so used to watching over the past few rounds and the whole year altogether. And uh, it'll be a theme throughout the night. So the Tigers will take it from underneath again. Gaze, pushes it back out to Conti, Babich had a back cut there, forced back out to the wing, now they swing the ball around and can't drop it again, just Conti very quick after the ball, 
She's a master at getting it back, isn't she, Guy? Very, very good in that situation. Well, probably lucky that she did because Bulleen had to lay up the other way if they had got that rebound. There was no safety. Error on the pass from Babbage. And now Bulleen. Bring it back for another opportunity. Low scoring game early. Three point attempt. Long. Conti quickly up the floor. Nice pass. Miss. Back to Gaze though. Forces it back out. And Monique Conti wearing the Tigers number one. Gets things underway again. Shot clock down to three. Down to two. And just some errors both ways early in the grand final. Maybe some nerves. Two teams are set to settle down at some stage, but we've seen uh, plenty of turnovers thus far. Well, credit the D again from Cara Tassari. I thought she moved her feet very well. The Melbourne attack looked promising because it's great to get your fast break going if you can zip that ball up the sideline, but uh, they couldn't quite capitalise on the play. Yeah, I'd agree with Guy there. I mean, obviously nerves are one part in a first quarter of a grand final, but certainly the defence has been locked in from the get-go. Tassari in and out of trouble. Again, another long look. Off hands, it'll be a Bulleen ball. Bulleen's ability, Steve, uh, a couple of substitutions coming up here for the Tigers. Bulleen's ability to score quickly in games. Uh, they've done it in the last quarter in the two finals so far. When they get on a roll, they're very, very hard to stop, aren't they? Yeah, look, they certainly are. I mean, uh, for the last month or so, they've been playing in patches. I mean, obviously, to their advantage, the fourth quarter has been a friend which has got them over the line in the last couple of games. But uh, Gary Fox will be looking for that effort in the first quarter rather than just the fourth. Tassari fouled there. Conti with uh, a couple of hands in the back. Well, Tassari's the out-of-bounds pass where she went right to the post-up and um, Monique Conti needs the front, which he's doing right now. One side to the other. Nice turn inside. That's uh, Nelson. Got a good name. We'll give her that. <laughs> I think it's, uh, is it Laura? Yep, Laura, Laura Nelson. Nelson. She's been a good player over the past couple of weeks, just uh, shoring up that middle of the defence and grabbing a lot of rebounds. No relation. She'll go to the line for a couple of shots. I actually like Bulleen's offence in preference to Melbourne right at the moment. Their spacing's much better. They're hitting, connecting well on screens and uh, finding their targets at the moment. I think the other thing that we've seen already in this game is uh, Bulleen's ability to move the ball from one side to the other has been exceptional. They are uh, certainly spacing the floor. And they've got the lead 4-2 at the moment. As Conti brings the ball up. Babic again. Out to the wing now. Can the Tigers get their second basket of the game? Monique Conti working inside. Nice little jumper. Off the iron falls to Babic. Flings it up quickly. It's a miss. They've had some chances. They just cannot put another one away. Tigers reeling in the offensive rebounds, doing a great job on the O boards. Conti again to the basket. That's nice. Well, very, good, very good. Good on the left hand, and I think uh, they're playing a three-out, two-in style with a lot of pick and roll. They've got to be able to stretch and take, uh, clear the picks and then make the play on the other side of the screen, which he did right then. Here's Tassari, had a lot of the ball early in this game. Looking, hesitation, dribble, then drives, misses off the glass. Conti away. She's got runners ahead of her. Uses Babich out on the wing. Directing traffic. Gets an on-ball screen now. Works off that. Now the Tigers use both sides of the floor. Nice ball inside. Out of hands. No. Just a miss. Good pressure there by Abby Zhang. Think she Kalka, gets a rest. I think Kalka just let that one slip out of her hands and she expected the basket to come before she could look at the ring. She's another one that's had a good season, Perry Kelka. Has played a little bit of seniors as well, Steve. Yeah, certainly. I mean, for their senior team, they lost a couple of important players midway through the season, so she had to go both uh, youth and seniors for a few weeks. Here's Ash Stainer, another turnover. Yeah, we should have had layups off the last two plays, so I think the, the players are a little bit nervous yet. It's only four apiece, first quarter. We're about six and a half minutes into this game. Here's Ash Stainer, open jumper, just inside the three-point arc, and she drops that, and Melbourne now hit the lead. Very low-scoring game to start this one off. Two teams trying to settle themselves in. 
Boomers with a chance to respond. Nice big rebound, Perry Kolka. And now the Tigers heading back the other way. Stainer gets the ball into Harley. Back out. Those two working in tandem. And again, shot clock down to five, to four, to three. Missing everything, Harley. And away. The Boomers, Tassari on the run. Just pulls things up. Has a look. Gets open. Step back three. Oh, very nice. Not far away. And it remains 6 4. The Tigers' way. They were a little unsure how to play her off the pick there. I think they need to body up and make sure she doesn't get that open look at the three. Here's Kranzberg. Undecided. Now she has her own step back look at a three. There's a miss. Another offensive rebound. And a very good putback on that occasion by Perry Kolka. And that'll bring about our first time out of this game. Melbourne lead at 8-4. Low scoring start. We've gone about seven and a half minutes. And, uh, well, there's a little bit to read so far. But I think both teams just trying to settle into this one, Guy. Well, Perry Kolka's done a really good job. Uh, she's influenced the game Melbourne's way. I think with their uh, backcourt sitting down, uh, Melbourne need to tighten up their defence. I think it's a little bit softer on the ball at the moment. They've dodged a couple of bullets from the um, bullying offence, but um, they're also getting a little bit confused by the switches that bullying are making in defence. So I think that the timeout for Melbourne will be about... Uh, their offensive execution and putting a little bit more pressure on the ball. I, I think Bullen are in reasonable shape here. I mean, they're not connecting on their shots, but uh, their adherence to the game plan so far isn't too bad. Interesting you see Gary Fox there having uh, some stern words. Now, the Melbourne coaching staff, we can see them on screen at the moment. Sarah Nobbs to the right there and uh, um, Joe Metcalf just talking to Monique Conti uh, on the sidelines there. Now... Sarah and Joe are normally the coach and assistant coach of the senior women at Melbourne, but they've been called into action during the finals for this youth team because the normal coaching staff are in Rio. So they've, 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 coached, them all, they've coached them all season, got to the finals and handed it over to Sarah and uh, Joe and said, uh, we're headed to Rio, please win a grand final. Well, well for hopefully us. They're, uh, they're on the live stream right now. There you go. We'll talk a little bit more about Joe Metcalf later on. She was a wonderful player uh, during a, an illustrious career in the WNBL, of course. Bulleen with a miss from Nelson at one end and coming back the other way. The Tigers look to set up. Got their posts up nice and high at the moment. Here's Stainer. Back out, Conti. Forces back, nice little step back, and a fantastic shot. Long two, deep two. And I'll tell you what, if she gets going, Guy, look out. Well, she had to make something happen. Uh, Melbourne's movement in offense is uh, ground to a halt. They've got to move the ball a little bit more. Zhang on the handoff to Sari. Nice look. Back of the ring. It'll fall Bulleen's way. Tassari looks at it, gets Conti off the floor, forces it back out on a pass. Bates, it looks like, onto the floor. Goes long. A miss, a scramble, a foul. It'll go Bulleen's way. See, again, I don't mind Bulleen's execution and, and getting a good look. They're not connecting with their shots, but they've, uh, they can't get discouraged. They've just got to stay on task. You see Ellie Bates on the baseline here about to bring the ball in. She's another one, Steve, that's played a lot of senior basketball this season. Yeah, and really important to this uh, Bulleen team. I mean, if she can get her three-point shot going, that'll be very, very tough to beat. Well, she worked a long time inside to get the ball then, Ali Bates. She eventually got it, and it was an up and over. She missed everything, and Melbourne have a chance to come back and add to this six-point lead. Big V live streaming tonight, grand final VYC women. Here's Ash Stainer. Pushes the ball outside. Now Conti with it for three. Yes. I reckon it was about 40 seconds ago, Guy, when we said, look out if she gets going. She scored the last two. Well, what a threat to have. And, and uh, if the game plan's not going great, if the offense is a bit stagnant, she's still there. Ali Bates is fouled. She'll go to the line for a couple. Gary Fox down on the sidelines there, urging his troops on. Now, I'm sure, knowing Bulleen, and I haven't seen a lot of youth champ this season, but uh, we've probably got some press coming from a free throw, and that would be a good thing. I mean, they need to uh, 
get some energy and momentum here. Certainly a stop before quarter time. Bates knocks down the first. That's their first score in a while now. Back-to-back -back inside moves from Bates. I think Melbourne a little bit cautious of her three-point weapon and she's done well getting to the free throw line on this occasion. 13-6, one player up the floor into Sari. Forces Stainer one way, then the other. She's got a gap here, works her way through. Good work, Ali Bates. Again, steal, forced away by the Boomers. Good work by Theodore. And she turns it over, bad pass, and a foul against Tassari. Stainer able to uh, grab possession there off that Theodore pass. And it will be a Melbourne ball. The tragedy for Bulleen, there was one shot left in the quarter and they had it, they've turned it over. Um, Melbourne should get the final look here. Taylor Destacio coming in for Brody Theodore. And Melbourne now with that chance. Harley. Seconds remaining. Sorry, Beth Theodore, I should say. Here's Stainer. Clock going down. Jumper. Misses. Rebound. No. Scramble. And there's the buzzer to end the first quarter. And it is the Melbourne Tigers leading the Bulleen Boomers 13-4. What are your thoughts, Steve? Nice and early in this game. Oh, that's right. Um, one quarter down, I think that would shake the nerves of both teams. Obviously, Bulleen having some chances on the offensive end, but just not being able to capitalise. Defensively, they're doing just fine, uh, giving up 13 points. But um, at quarter time, they've got a little bit of work to do. So quarter time in this one, it is the visiting team leading his grand final, 13 points to 6. So quarter time here in the VYC Women's Grand Final for 2016. Big V action. And it's the Tigers leading this one 13-6. In the back five minutes of that opening quarter, they went on an 11-2 run. Monique Conti has seven points so far for the Tigers and leading the way for Bulleen. Cara Tassari with that long three that she dropped uh, about midway through the quarter. But it's the Tigers leading 13-6. Guy Malloy. Well, with Bulleen shooting the ball 1 of 11 from the field right now, they've just got to finish. And again, I, I mentioned a couple of times their process of offense hasn't been too bad, but they're obviously nervous or not getting their regular shots, and they need to settle down quickly to get back into the game. Early foul called against Abby Zhang. I'm delighted to say, Steve, that we've finally got Bulleen's correct numbers, by the way. Yeah, that's right. It was a little bit of a struggle <laughs> in the first quarter, but thankfully... One of the statisticians has looked after us and we've got the correct numbers. I think every player changes their singlets before the game. Here's Babbage to bring it in for the Tigers. Poorly executed play from the end out. Conti. Looking, shot clock down to six. Ball inside. Terry Kolka there. Terry Kolka has got... Very long arms, and that pass got thrown up, and uh, she stuck a mid out and grabbed that thing. She's causing them a few problems at the moment too, uh, Perry Colker, especially off that glass four rebounds in the first quarter. Yeah, really, really thought she changed the game when she came in to uh, Melbourne's favour. Again, some indecision off that baseline play. Conti, hesitation, pulls up, short to Sari now, away quickly. On the right hand. Here's Bates, knocked away, Conti goes back at it again, Bates picks it up, and Monique Conti called for the foul. That's her second. Not too happy with the call. It was a little bit unfortunate for, for Conti there. I mean, that, that hustle for the ball, obviously Bates was the first one there, and she probably felt like she let her get past and was picked up for the foul. Distacio brings it in. 
Straight into the to uh, Tassari. Back out, Distasio. Tassari now working in from the wing. Forced away. Long shot, doesn't drop for Distasio. Loose ball, picked up Zhang. Tassari has a look, back out to Zhang. On the floor, to the basket, puts it away. Nice. Very nice drive from Zhang there. Hopefully, for Bulleng's sake, it uh, gets their offense working. 13-8. Bulleen with the first score of this second quarter. Babic undecided. Still yet to score, by the way, in this game. Stainer into the corner. Nice little jumper. Misses for Kolka. And another foul called on the Tigers. So Phoebe Gaze picks up the foul. Did you see much in that guy? We just saw the replay then. No, not a lot, but I think that the Melbourne players need to keep their composure on the foul call. Here's Laura Nelson. Must have the longest hair of any player, I think, Laura Nelson. You can't see her number on the back. Can't see that Nelson, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Here she is now with the ball. Good post-up play. Knocked away by this player here, Babich. That's a steal to the basket, oh. and she is rejected in a major way by Laura Nelson. I don't think a good decision to drive. She had two people right on her. She needed to pull that one out and move the ball. Ball in quickly. Long shot off the hands of Zoe Kranzberg. There's Kalka Back out, again. Kelka. Gaze gets another look at it, forces her way to the left and drops it in. Nice work. Now, Phoebe Gaze and Perry Kolker at the moment, Guy, when they're getting their hands on the ball, they're proving a handful. Yeah, really long-armed athletes and uh, creating plenty of second chances for the Tigers. Distasio with a high dribble. The give wasn't good. Stainer comes away with it. The Tigers upping the tempo here a little bit at the moment. 15 to 8 is the score. Long look. Zhang with the rebound. Here's Tassari away. Game beginning to open up a little bit. Ball they need to take care of the ball. Nelson a miss. Stainer brings it back up for the Tigers. She's the captain, I think, Steve. Ash Stainer of this team, is she, or is uh, Monique Conti the captain? Uh, I'm not too sure on that one, Justin. I'll let you work that out. Here's Babbage, shot clock down to three, to two, to one, inside. Stainer just got the shot up, and Kolka keeps it alive. His Babbage ran that clock down very, very late, didn't she? Yeah, they've been over dribbling the ball a little bit too often. Uh, a lot of pick and roll in their offense, but I think they need to make the extra pass out of the pick. And it's down again, down to a second by the time Stainer puts the shot up. And she's fouled, so she'll go to the line for a couple as Jess Harley is about to come back into this game. Pauline making three changes at the moment as well. Sam Moody, 42. Heading back out there along with Shania Patea. And it looks like uh, young Beth Theodore as well. So Gary Fox. Well, Gary would be looking for a bit of leadership on the floor right now. I mean, they've got to keep their composure while they find their way. Uh, they're putting scoreboard pressure on themselves. I mean, the fact that they can't get the, the board ticking over will be having an impact on them. And they need to find someone they can go to right now. 16-8. Tigers lead and it's just at that dangerous point at the moment Steve where if Bulleen don't stay in touch here and there's an offensive foul called that certainly doesn't help there for the Boomers but you're right just uh, as Guy mentioned scoreboard pressure on themselves obviously finding themselves only eight points down and that's nothing unusual for the Boomers in the past month but uh, if they can't get the scoreboard ticking they're going to put certain amount of pressure on themselves that offensive foul was on Beth Theodore Let's see what the Tigers can do. They lead by eight. Stainer, who's had a lot of the ball so far tonight. She has a long look at a three, misses. There's another offensive rebound. The Tigers come up with it again. Perry Kolka proving a real handful off the glass at the moment. Stainer through the middle. Too easily through the middle. Misses. Loose shot. And the Boomers get a chance to bring it back. Moody to Tassari. Got it again in her hand now. 
Zhang, step back, three, long. Boomers get it back. Thought Tassari was going to fire away there. Gets it on her right hand. Hesitation through the paint. Can't drop it. Loose ball. And I think we'll have a jump. Think, certainly a possession. I think Gary Fox here has understood that uh, he's got to get his team to match Melbourne's size. So they've put Patea, Moody and Zhang on all at the same time to match Melbourne's height. Well, we've got a timeout. We're about to... Just coming up to the halfway mark of this second quarter, Melbourne lead it 16 to 8 over Bulleen. VYC Women's Grand Final in the Big V for season 2016. With his thoughts thus far, here's Guy Malloy. Bulleen's game plan defensively, they're, they're switching a lot in the half court, and that is causing Melbourne issues because they're not quite sure how to read the switches or who to go to, and as a result, they're tending to over dribble the ball. What's getting them out of trouble is the efforts of um, the young girl, Kalka, number 13, providing so many second chances and throwing the ball back out. So I think if Bullen are able to keep the pressure on the, on the ball up the floor, keep the switches going, cause some indecision, it'll at least hold the fort for them. But they've got to find a much better formula offensively right now. I mean, they've scored eight points in nearly a quarter and a half of basketball. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. It's, uh, it's pretty hard going at the moment for the Boomers. They are mixing it up, though, inside, outside. They've had their opportunities in uh, all areas. But they just cannot get that scoreboard ticking over. Maybe a chance here on the inbound. Shot clock at 12. Tassari gets it back. What have they set up here? Back out to the wing. Theodore looks inside. Moody one way, then the other. Can't drop it. And Melbourne bring it back once again. Not the result they wanted out of a timeout. Let's see what the Tigers can do. Kolka, by the way, seven rebounds in this game at the moment. That's Harley. She gets back another offensive rebound. Chance. Long shot for Babich. She couldn't drop it. There's a foul. Just the rebound count at the moment is uh, 18 to 15, but of those 18 boards for Melbourne, 10 have been off the offensive glass. Well, effectively, it creates 10 more offensive chances. So in, in terms of possession game, it puts Melbourne in front, uh, and that, that probably reflected in the scoreboard right now. The Boomers, by the way, Steve, shooting at 11%, 2 of 17. Yeah, and obviously reflected on the scoreboard, but um, also not getting to the line as much as they would have hoped, um, shooting 2 of 17, so hopefully that can change in the near future for them. Zoe Kranzberg just puts the one away. Melbourne lead at 17 to 8, and they're holding this lead guy whilst Monique Conti is on the sidelines. Well, good to get her a bit of a blow at the moment, and... Uh... I think uh, this is where bullying can really exert some pressure. I mean, they've got uh, Kara Tassari, who should be a good target for them. Let's see if they're able to find her now. Through hands. Got a double pick for her to come off. Nelson has Tassari now. Then a pick and roll. Just like to see her a little bit more aggressive to create something. Patea fouled. She'll go to the foul line now and uh, have a look at a couple. They just seem a little bit hesitant at the moment uh, out of those sets, don't they, Guy? They're sort of uh, second-guessing themselves, I think. Well, we know uh, one of the, the real issues at this age is for, or this age of player is to get them to aggressively catch the ball and face the basket every time so that they're a threat to score. And right now, I don't think anyone in the Bulleen team is taking it upon themselves to just demand respect from the Melbourne D. Shania Patea misses the first. And just drops the second. That's their first score in a little while. They move to nine. They trail by eight. Kranzberg. Good high-low play again from Melbourne. Looking, short corner. Nice. Been a couple of good looks from that short corner for the Tigers. That was Jess Harley putting it away. So the Tigers add a couple. Oh, not a good pass by Theodore. She's turned it over a couple of times tonight. Babbage back the other way. That was a great take 
by Brianna Babich. How's the take on the run there? That was a hard pass. She made it look easily, taking it in the right hand and putting it straight to the floor. That was very, very nice. Yeah, when you can take it that well, you can obviously use the speed you, you currently have and take it hard to the basket. That time, only a one-on-one -on -one gets the call. Much better decision there from Babbage. Now, interestingly here, in her 11th minute on the floor, that's her first score of the game, Guy, and that is very uh, slow going for Brianna Babbage. Well, she's had a couple of opportunities where she's gone to the rack fairly well. I think that the finish has been a little bit more watching what the defence is doing rather than keeping locked into the basket. So perhaps playing for the foul a bit too much. Tassari forces it up, gets it back. Pistacio. Open Ooh, underneath. Yep, had Nelson wide open underneath. Tassari for three, puts it away. And that's exactly what the boomers needed. Reduces that margin to nine. Tassari's put away a couple from long range tonight. Stood up just when they needed her. Let's see if the Tigers can respond. In the hands of Babbage. Has a look. Fires away. Misses. Now the Boomers can run here. They can run and Tassari can go all the way to the basket and put away another couple. Probably the first fast break opportunity for the Boomers right there. So... Finally a chance for them to get out and run. As Abby Zhang knocks it out of court. The Tigers may get a timeout here. They will. And they've been forced into it, Guy, because Kara Tassari has scored the last five points of this game and reduced the margin to seven. Tigers lead it 21 to 14. Well, as Steve said, it was the first fast break points that uh, Bullen have been able to accrue. And... Uh, They've forced quite a few turnovers from their D and they haven't run out of those turnovers. And, and that's a great way to get uh, the offense ticking over. So um, perhaps they can do that a little bit more. Challenge Melbourne to, to sprint back and, uh, you know, make them play D a little bit earlier and harder than what they want to. Worth mentioning that uh, Tassari is the only player on the floor who is yet to leave the floor. She's played uh, all... 15, uh, 15, 16 minutes in this game tonight. I haven't seen her off the floor once. I could be mistaken. There. Have you seen her have a breather at all? No, I don't think so. But um, obviously for the Tigers, Ash Dane has been a great uh, backup point for them. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Monique Conti get back on the floor just to match up on Tassari after her quick outburst. Tassari has eight points in the game. She's leading the way for Bulleen for Melbourne. Monique Conti has seven and uh, as we mentioned earlier, Perry Kolker already seven rebounds in this game. Here's a chance for the Tigers coming out of the timeout. Zemis, Laura Nelson mops it up, gets it to Tassari. And away they come, Abby Zhang. Nice, crossover. Very, very uh, good look at the basket. Knocked away though by Lucy Purchase. And it will be a bullying ball. Lucy's another tall, long arm Melbourne athlete, and she had a nice post move at the other end. Didn't quite go for her, but got back well in D and blocked the shot. We'll update you with some other scores in the Big V tonight shortly as well. Here's Tassari, ball on the floor. Again, knocked away. Nice offensive rebound by Laura Nelson, though, and she puts it away. And all of a sudden, Bulleen have got themselves on a bit of a run here, and the margin is back to five, Steve. Yeah, they certainly have. Obviously, we spoke about. Bulleen only having eight points halfway through the second quarter. It didn't take long, and as we mentioned earlier in the game, Bulleen can just go on those quick runs. There's eight points. They've doubled their score in just under three minutes. And not surprisingly, Monique Conti back onto the floor. As you mentioned, Guy, and instantly a threat. She'll go to the line for two. Well, very hard to pressure her that closely, that far from the basket. And... Uh if you can see those yellow lines painted on the floor, that, that's uh, a netball court or uh, some sport like that. And uh, <laughs> they were out there at that yellow line playing her, which uh, is going to put a lot of pressure on your D. Misses both. Very much unlike her. Good foul. Yep. To Sari to Zhang. To Stasio. Undecided. Doesn't like the ball in her left hand by the looks of it. And the pass was a little bit astray. 11th turnover for Bulleen there, so quickly racking up the numbers in the first half. Kolka into Conti. Brings it up the floor quickly. One way, then the other. 
Long shot. Home. Well done, Tigers. Jordan Kranzberg, nice three-pointer there. And she's been okay since coming on as well in this game. So the Tigers get a score. They move it along to 24. And Tassari answer. She's had a very good quarter. Nice little look as she uh, drives inside. Forced out, though. Destacio, tall timber around her. Misses. Don't think that hit the iron. It didn't. And it will be a shot clock violation. The Tigers will get it back. Zoe and Jordan Kranzberg. Numbers 22 and 23 for Melbourne. They've uh, provided some good minutes so far. Tigers lead it by eight. Here's Stainer. Into the corner. Kelka. Back to Stainer. Monique Conti on a back cut. Pushes it outside. Long shot. Purchase. Misses. Is there a foul? Or just off hands. Off hands. It'll be a bullying ball. A minute 22 away from the half. It's an eight-point margin to the Tigers, leading at 24 to 16. Tassari, ball on the floor, forces the issue, draws the foul. She'll go to the line for a couple, and I've got no doubt, Guy, that uh, the Tigers will have a chat about Kara Tassari at halftime. Well, they didn't communicate the high pick at all. I mean, it was a good screen on the ball, which gave her an open lane to the bucket, but there's no reason to try and fight over a pick about uh, 40 feet. I'm too old, I say feet. How many <laughs> metres is that? No, I'm with you. Too, too far out. Don't go over the pick that far out, and that's why she got to the ring. Yeah, you say feet. I'll probably convert it to inches, and Steve's just nodding his head and uh, not understanding a word we're saying at the moment. No comparison there. I'm just, just working the modern technology. Tassari puts a couple away. She's got 10 in the game. First player to get into double digits tonight. They trail by six. Bulleen. Nice ball inside. Kelka, ball on the floor. Turnaround jumper from the short corner. Misses. Patea comes up with it. Hands it off to Tassari. Nice run past Stainer. She wants to go to the basket again. Finds a way. Misses. Needed the left. Didn't Melbourne get have a quick two for one if they're aware. Conti. She'll go to the line for a couple. Well, that'll do it. Probably, uh, whether it was intentional or not, great decision to go with 40 seconds, 42 seconds left on the clock. It means Bulleen will have one more possession, but Melbourne will have one too. And Sarah Nobbs uh, calling a timeout to have a chat about that very point, I think, Guy. What's going to happen in the next 42 with a possession each way? And in the last couple of minutes, we've seen... Uh, Two of the fastest players in VYC women, Steve, in Karatasari and Monique Conti, both running the length of the floor. Yeah, we certainly have, and it may prove to be a costly miss for Tassari down one end as um, a four-point swing could occur here if Conti makes both free throws. And you look at the scoreboard now going into halftime, it could have been a different story if Tassari had made that bucket. Give you some updates from around uh, the Big V tonight, of course. It is finals time, plenty happening. In state championship women, uh, Hume City on the road have taken game one of their series against Southern Peninsula, 81 to 63. Britt Carter with 17 points tonight for the home team. For Hume City, Mua Laloifi's come out and hit 30 points tonight, shooting at 61%. Colleen Planita, 20 points and 12 rebounds. What a game from Mua Laloifi. Yeah, it got the start for the Broncos and uh, didn't look back, obviously. Southern Peninsula would have had most of their focus on Planeta, but uh, Laloifi, always an interesting matchup for any opposition. And in the other matchup in state champ women, uh, seven seconds away from time, the visiting team, Knox, will win that one. They lead Ringwood 64 to 55. Mel Dixon with 15 points tonight for Ringwood for Knox. It looks like Lucy Dawson's come out and hit 21 tonight to lead the scoring for Knox. So Knox will head home with a one-game lead in that best of three as well. Dying seconds here. Conti put a couple away. Bulleen now with a chance to close this 10-point margin. Patea, Tassari, long nails it. What a second quarter Cara Tassari's had in this grand final. Reduces it to five. Melbourne with the last look. We'll talk about Tassari some more in a moment. Here's Conti under the basket, out. Long, Stainer, or is it Babich out there? Stainer. Stainer, misses. Tassari's got a chance back the other way. 
Patea undecided. Good defense. Great defense by the Tigers. Didn't count. And it won't count as the buzzer goes to end. An entertaining first half. Both teams just starting to find their feet in this grand final. Melbourne lead at 26 to 21 as the two teams go in for a chat. And no doubt, Guy, the second quarter belonged to Kara Tassari. And a good little dribble handoff play there. Um, I it, it may have been Abby Zang. I can't remember who gave the handoff. But uh, again, defence went underneath the screen, which right now for Kara I would not do. I would say body up and go over the pick and push her into a little bit of help. But the defence got caught on that, and she had a nice look at the three. Uh, Melbourne came down with the last possession and uh, just shot the ball way too early. Almost gave Bulleen another shot uh, right at the end. Well, Kara Tassari added 10 points in that quarter. She's up to 13 for the game. And no doubt, she has kept the boomers in this one. The margin's back to five. It did go out to double digits at one stage. Yeah, and she's certainly been locked in from behind the arc. Obviously not getting it to go inside the arc at this stage, but that's something she'll work on in the second half. And uh, obviously the boomers will need to rely on her a little bit because most of the offense is going through her. For Melbourne, uh, Monique Conti has nine points in the game, and she is the leading scorer for Melbourne. So it's half time. Grand Final 2016 Big V, uh, VYC Women's Grand Final. The Bulleen Boomers on their home deck up against the Melbourne Tigers. And at halftime, it's the visitors, the Tigers, halfway to a title. They lead this one 26 to 21. So Chris Arkell, Waverley Falcons, state champ men. Talia Higgs, Waverley, state champ women. Paul McCoy, Waverley Falcons, state champions. <laughs> uh, Tom Boyle, Waverley Falcons, state champ men. Ivan Platonic, uh, Waverley Falcons, senior champ men. Waverley, Tegan Cunningham, women's champ. George Dolagianis, Waverley Falcons. Katie Bluzer, Waverley Falcons, state champ. Ilya Poliana, state champ, women's coach of Waverley. Mike Bullock, championship men coach, star. No singing ones. Oh, I'd have to say Chris Arkell and myself when we get together. Oh, well, that's a tough one. Uh, I would have to say Chris Arkell. He's definitely got some great moves. Ringwood. Uh, I think Ringwood and us have a bit of a rivalry, so I would say Ringwood. Can't go wrong with Ringwood, Ringwood for sure. 
Tegan Cunningham. I'd say Tegan. I'll have to say Ivan Platnik. Oh, I would say Sid Albans, probably myself. Let's say it would be Sammy. Shelby or Elise. My go-to party trick is to grab a drink and sit down. Shots. <laughs> party trick. The turn and chuck. Tom. Oh, I'm going to have to say Tommy Boyle. Elise. Well, actually, it's not a player. It's Ilya Pelianis, our coach in the women's. Ilya? Can I count him in? Katie. <laughs> Many people ask us, what is vMix? Well, thanks for asking. vMix is software that allows you to create awesome live video productions. vMix supports a variety of different inputs to help your live production come to life. These include cameras, videos, images, titles, PowerPoint, green screen, streams, audio, and more. You can then display your production on screens, record to your hard drive, and stream to the web all at the same time. There are many different applications for vMix. Some of our customers have used it for large music concerts, school productions, live sports coverage, church services, eSports, live web streaming shows, horse auctions, you name it, vMix can do it. What do you need to use vMix? At the very basic end of things, you can use a computer with onboard graphics and a webcam. If you want to bring in a few HD cameras, you'll need a bit more processing power, a dedicated graphics card, and a capture device. We have a list of recommended system requirements on our website. Whether you're an aspiring YouTube singer in your bedroom performing Phil Collins covers, or someone with an 8-camera live concert production, vMix is for you. There is a free 60-day fully functional trial on our website, www.vmixhd.com. So check it out. Welcome back to the 2016 Big V VYC Women's Grand Final halftime in this one. And it's the Melbourne Tigers you can see on screen there leading this one 26 to 21. Hello to everyone out there, wherever you may be watching. Of course, with thanks to Falcons TV tonight. Justin Nelson with you, along with Guy Malloy and Steve Chalmers. Gentlemen, five-point margin. Melbourne lead this one. Both teams have struggled to score. In fact, the boom is going at 22% in that first half, and Melbourne not much better at just under 24%. I think whichever team can find their shooting stroke in this second half, might be well on their way to a championship title. Well, if you're bullying, you're not dissatisfied with the margin, only five down, and uh, they haven't really played that well. Well, they haven't finished that well at all. I mean, the shooting's been miserable. So you would think that, that they're in, at the change room at halftime, Gary Fox is probably thinking, hey, we're a great chance here. Melbourne, I don't think, did enough when they had a good lead and they had bullying on the ropes. So they've got work to do through quarter three. Some other key stats in this one so far, Steve. Uh, both teams with 23 rebounds each, but Melbourne have 12 at the offensive end. Uh, Bulleen with 11 turnovers to Melbourne's three. 
And the other one, Brianna Babich, who's been one of the leading scorers in this competition, held to just two points in that first half. Yeah, that's right. No field goals for Babich. She's uh, been averaging about just under 19 points per game this season. So the two points for the first half she'll look to significantly increase. But um, those offensive rebounds uh, for Melbourne, really well led by Perry Kalka. Tassari with 13 for Bulleen. Conti with 9 for Melbourne. We're underway in the second half as we uh, await to find out this year's champion team as Babich misses and on the rebound again another offensive rebound for the Tigers Jess Harley is fouled she'll go to the line for a couple to start this second half let's not forget also that Bulleen has played in the previous two grand finals in this competition both under Gary Fox so he's been here before and they've lost both I did like the first possession for Melbourne and I think for young Brianna Babich it was a good decision to put the ball on the floor and go hard to the rack. Drew the help D and uh, that's why Melbourne got a couple of free throws. Harley puts one away but kept alive again by Perry Kolka. What a great game she's had so far. That's her 10th rebound in this game, Perry Kolka. So she's causing all sorts of problems for Bulleen with those long arms. Here's Babich again. Kranzberg comes up short. May have just come off the leg there of Sam Moody. I think it did. And it will be a one Melbourne second ball. on the clock. It's got to be a catch and shoot. Who's she going to go to? In. That'll do it. That uh, horrible rule that Fever in their wisdom decreed that we shall have 14 seconds only after an offensive rebound, butchering the game at the uh, central technical level. Bad pass in for Tassari. That came from Nelson and Conti wastes no time. Gets her own rebound, flicks it back out. Little jumper Kranzberg misses. Is that Babich underneath? I think it is. And that might be her first field goal of the game, Steve. So you uh, got her going in this second half and she's delivered for you. Yeah, that's right. And don't forget the unbelievable athleticism from Conti then. Just obviously to backtrack backwards, take the steal and obviously get her own offensive rebound as Perry Kalka runs the length of the floor and lays it in to... Uh, Force Gary Fox to his first time out of the second half. 31 21, 10 point lead. They've scored the last couple, and uh, in fact, they've scored the last six points, uh, five points, I should say. And uh, Gary Fox wasted no time whatsoever to use one of his three timeouts in this second half. Good work by the Tigers. They've come out firing. Now, Justin, if I call a timeout that quickly in the quarter. <laughs> I'm ducking for cover. <laughs> I'm in trouble with you at Melbourne Boomers you because you, you're scrambling for the first event after half time. You can see the necessity, though. Yeah. Gary has obviously seen the breakdowns. And Melbourne, you couldn't have uh, scripted a better beginning to quarter number three. Uh, loving the game of Perry Kalker. I, I think uh, on that last play, if um, give that girl a tennis ball, I think she could dunk one. Well, the other thing is they've started this second half with a further three offensive rebounds. It really has been a telling stat in this game, the work by the Tigers off the offensive glass. And uh, it was only a matter of time before they started converting those baskets or those opportunities, and we've seen that to start this second half. The lead out to 10, pivotal, uh, pivotal moment in this grand final. But we need some other contributors in their row. Well, they've got to rein this margin back in. Maybe Moody draws the foul. And she'll go to the line for a couple. Only played four and a half minutes in the first half, Sam Moody. Yeah, and was a, a really good contributor last week. One assist shy of the uh, five by five stat line, which was excellent work by Sam Moody. But um, Five by five? Right. Well, she did, Points, plenty, did rebounds, plenty of everything. Assists, steals, blocks. She had a great game last I week. I haven't heard that one before. Uh, it's just one of those things that Steve makes up. Yeah. You know how well, it is. Obviously, the media lo love these type of stats. <laughs> Coaches, obviously, not so much. <laughs> Moody puts a couple away, brings it back to eight. The Tigers started very well in this third quarter. Conti. Good work there by Jess Harley to open things up for her as well. Little jumper, misses. Loose ball. Boomers get after it. Maybe Perry Kolka, just a little bit too overambitious. 
has fouled. She has. I thought uh, Monique had the uh, open shot off the uh, dribble handoff and, and played around with the ball a little bit too long there. But uh, uh, Melbourne, we're seeing some old Melbourne Tigers, Lindsay Gay's first option with a, with a variation on the ending. Good play. Theodore now. Moody drawing a foul against Phoebe Gaze. Phoebe Gaze not that uh, impressed with the whistle. Guy talks about uh, the Boomers trying to get some other contributors on, on the offense. Uh, Bethany Theodore, Shania Pateo are usually two good contributors. Uh, Theodore hasn't registered a field goal attempt yet. Pateo, 0 of 2. Here's Pateo with the ball now. Hands it off to Moody. Inside. To Sari, back out. Patea with a chance off the glass, misses, rebound. Moody turns it back, puts it away. There's almost a collective sigh from everyone in the in the venue when uh, Boyne gets a bucket. Six point margin. Here's Conti. Kranzberg. Harley back to Kranzberg. Conti open, has a look, fires, and hits. Got to close out better than that. With your Sam Moody on the switch there. Jumps up to 12 in the game now for Monique Conti. Well, Shania Patea was aware of the back pick coming and didn't quite know what to do. The communication broke down and, and it gave Monique enough space to operate. Tassari has it knocked out of her hand by Conti. And a good look for Bulleen. That was successful early for them. I'd put uh, Cara back in that post up and uh, Monique had some early foul trouble. I'd make a play a little bit down there. Here they go again. Oh, Babich. Well, she's very good on the steal, Brianna Babich. We spoke about that at the start of the game. And she's come up trumps there, winning the ball back for the Tigers, who are out to a nine-point lead at the moment. Gary Fox crosses his arms and slumps back in his chair. They're trying to get something going, and then a lazy turnover with the ball. 13 turnovers for the game. Babich, hesitation, is a ripper. And she attacks off that right wing. She's starting to get going in this game. Good start to the third period. Tassari pulls up the dribble. Not a good pass from Patea to Moody at her feet. And that's turnover number 14 against the Boomers as uh, Laura Nelson comes back into the game. Yeah, the Boomers really got to look after the ball. And um, on the defensive end, if Babich and Conti both get going, any opposition team's in a lot of trouble. Well, they've both had a fair bit of it in the opening three minutes of this third period. Keep an eye on them. They are heating up. Babich, wow. we just spoke about her. Long shot, misses, gets it back. Has it knocked out of her hand by Tassari? Didn't hesitate to fire. She'll bring it back in. Let's see what they run off the baseline here. Not a lot of movement. Conti wants it high, gets it high. Dribbling, pulls up. Harley. Oh, may have forced her uh, defender off there. She did. And I think she... Uh, was it Harley or was it Gaze? Yeah. Harley it was. No, it was Harley. Yep. I don't think there was any doubt about the call, though. No one was surprised. Tassari using one of those high posts. It's Moody inside to Bates. Couldn't take it. Conti picks it up. Ball up to Babich. Babich quickly. She's got to move the ball. She may get on the drive here. She does. Underneath to the basket. Puts it away. Too slick there for Sam Moody. You can see her just sizing that up. Her attack off that right wing in this quarter has been sublime. Here's Nelson. Bates gets it off, down low, and Sam Moody answers at the other end for the Boomers. Melbourne have been doing a good job at the last couple of possessions, getting switches to uh, have bigger body defender on, defenders on both Conti and Babich, which has allowed them to get to the ring, just like that one there for Conti. Well, with the switches in that case, I mean, it worked in uh, Monique Conti's favour, and, and she had a huge speed advantage. Conti up to 14 points in the game. Babich called for the foul. 
the length of, in Melbourne, of Melbourne defensively is intimidating. I mean, they've got some really tall girls and they build a wall, as we say. They build a wall when Bulleen do penetrate the ball. They body up and put their hands straight up in the air and it's a difficult thing to shoot over for the, for the Bulleen players. Their finish has been a real issue. Boomers are in the bonus here. As Theodore puts the first away. I'd like to see him come out with some extended pressure after the free throw here and change the momentum a little bit. That's Theodore's first point of the game too. Misses the second. Scramble. Well, I thought Harley had it. She's had to go back after it. And there may be a what? foul called. The two referees having a chat. We'll I see what the decision is. I believe one called a foul, one jump ball. Jump ball results. You always like that if you were the uh, potential offending player, don't you? We haven't seen a good end out of bounds play yet in the game. Yeah, I agree with that. Here's Nelson. Tassari wants it back and gets it back. Dribbles it out to Ali Bates. Long three. Misses. Loose ball off hands. Kranzberg picks it up to Conti. Away they go. The coach urging them on from the sidelines. Yeah, Sarah Babbage. Nobbs really wanting that push of the ball, and why not? I think that's where Melbourne do have a good edge. Tassari, good work on Babbage. Just looked a little bit uncomfortable on the left wing on that occasion. We've seen her attack from the right wing this quarter. Here's Conti. Oh, hello. Loves that. Misses. Loose hands. Bulleen come up with it. Back the other way. They trail by 12. Theodore out to Sari. Wow. Up to 16 in the game. And uh, I think that might be a third three in the game, Steve. Fourth, I believe. Fourth. And Playing probably, well. probably Bulleen's second fast break for the game. They've got a chance here again, Guy. Away. Theodore slowed up, though. Now goes again. Moody on the elbow. Bates gets inside. Loves to work to the basket. Comes off underneath, though. And I think she's fouled. She has. So it's a nine-point margin. There's Bates again, twisting, turning. Found a gap, but just couldn't put it away. And then fouled as a result off that rebound. So Inspector Gadget, Perry Kalka, is back on the court. As I said, the Melbourne defence is intimidating. They're building good walls and making Bulleen's finish difficult. Fransberg. Haven't seen Ash Stainer this quarter, have we? Bulleen moved into a, a zone, something that was really effective last week versus Ringwood. Well, it's effective first time up this week as well. Nine-point margin. Tassari having a wonderful game. Conti right there with her. Tassari on the handoff. Long three. Comes up short. Her eyes are lighting up at the moment. Here comes Ash Stainer. I think this is her first run in the half, if I'm not mistaken. And she played uh, 14 of the 20 minutes in the first half. Yeah, and was a really good use of uh, a backup point guard, giving Monique Conti a, a ton of rest, which... Um, could prove to be vital in the fourth quarter. Well, there's Brianna Babich, and she had a long time to size that up, Guy, didn't she? Well, Bulleen came out with a 2-2-1 press, but Conti just broke it apart, and uh, the cross-court pass created the open three. Now, that was uh, Conti's basket as much as anyone. And pressure there by Conti on Tassari forces that turnover, so the Boomers not having a good night when it comes to looking after the ball. 17 to 5. Uh, 17 to five in terms of turnovers. It's proving costly, isn't it? 12 point margin, you don't want to be giving it back to them. Let's see if the zone has any impact on the game. Here's Babich again, just hit a three from there. Kolka, Conti, Babich, look out, look out, look out. No, misses. Rebound, Moody, away, Tassari. What will she do on this occasion? Hesitates, goes again. Pass out. Bates picks it up. Hands it off to Tassari. Runs the arc. Picks up the dribble. Conti straight onto it. Long shot. Theodore for three. Nails it. Well, we're seeing both teams open this game up now. 
And the crowd getting right into it. It's grand final time, ladies and gentlemen. There's Stainer, nice ball in. And Babich again off that right wing, puts it away. Certainly having a good quarter, Babich, both from inside and out. 11-point margin. Babich up to 13 in the game. Long shot for Zhang. Comes up well short. And the Tigers get another chance. I think it's good Bulleen's going to stay in their press a little while. And it looks like it gi it's giving them a little bit more energy offensively. It's a potential trap there. Forced the turnover. Out of bounds. So Tassari with 16. Conti with 14. Babbage with 13. So three of this competition's leading scorers are getting going. Here's one of them. Tassari draws the foul and puts it away. She has 18 in the game, and she has a chance to edge that up to 19. Well, a really lazy D by Monique Conti at the top of the you know, past half court, and she just took a swipe at the ball, and, and Cara just uh, drove right by her, and then there was precious little help behind. Right now, I like Melbourne's uh, attack of the pressure. They're really trying to carve it apart, but I think if Bulleen stick with it, uh, it only takes Melbourne to go a little bit negative. It could be a game changer for them. Tassari, 19 in the game now. Margin back to eight. And we know how well Bulleen can finish a game. We've seen it the last two weeks in the finals. It's got them to here tonight on their home deck, up against the Tigers. Good deflection there by Theodore. Tassari away. Another stop in that 2-3 zone. Slows it up, Bates, outside the arc. Puts it on her hand. She's held up there by Babich. And she'll go to the line for a couple. So a nice little period here for the Boomers. We may have a timeout coming. We do. Melbourne's first of this half. Free throws to come after the timeout too. Melbourne in the bonus. So the coaches with a bit to say. Gary Fox would have to be pleased with the effort in the last couple of minutes, Guy. Yeah, the momentum has definitely shifted their way. And uh, Melbourne do need to get the ball into the middle against the zone. They've turned it over a couple of times. So I think uh, the message right now from coach uh, Sarah Nobbs will be to take care of the ball. Uh, definitely keep attacking the basket. They don't want to go negative. But uh, I think that... Uh, it's a good chance now for, for Gary to use his wide experience to try and draw up a play or two to, to help Bulleen finish the quarter well. Tigers lead it by eight. More in a moment. The VYC women in the Big V, proudly brought to you by Moulton, as Bates misses the first. Just under 90 seconds to play in this third quarter. It's going to be a race to the line. Ali Bates short on the second. They get it back though, do they? Yes, no. Conti doing well, and has she won it back? She has for the Tigers. Mm. So some good work there by Monique Conti. Deflections. Coaches love deflections. Bulleen should have had a second chance opportunity then, but that's just as bad as a turnover. Stainer. Ball on the floor. Works through the paint. Finds her way to the glass and puts it away. Oh, that was too easy. Just carved her way through the taller timber there. And Conti's been called for a clumsy foul. That'll be her third. Third, I believe. Just her second field goal of the game, Ash Stainer, but she's certainly been a spark off the bench. It's just always a messy looking foul, isn't it, Guy, when you reach around from behind? Yeah, there's not usually much profit in it, and uh, being in the bonus and with the game being called fairly tightly, uh, Bulleen will probably get some profit just by putting their heads down a little bit and driving for the remainder of the quarter. Well, they've had some chances from the foul line. We just saw Bates miss a couple. Theodore puts the first one away, though. Drags it back to nine. 
on the second, makes that as well. Just over a minute to go in this third period, grand final day. Now the Tigers with a couple. Oh, not a great pass was purchased to Babich. Had to bring it back out. Stainer now, that's not a good pass. Plucked away by Theodore. Forces it out to Bates. Up high. Patea hands it off. Nelson, that's not her range. In fact, sorry, that's Zhang. She's uh, missed a couple from outside tonight, hasn't she? She's got that unorthodox shot, but uh, she lets it go quickly. I, I would guess she's a little bit streaky with that action. Kolka to Babich. She's out on this wing again. She brings it up to Conti. Inside. Nice work. Babich is going to put this away. No, she won't. She'll be found. So some good ball movement inside there between Purchase, Kolka and well, Babich. Well, you see, that's the first time they've been able to penetrate off the pass into the middle of the zone with good impact and uh, some beautiful passing there by the Tigers and probably needed to hit the initial layup, but uh, two free throws for a good shooter should suffice. They've got some pedigree, haven't they, the Tigers? The Purchase name and the Gaze name. Indeed they do. And uh, I'm glad that uh, there are some girls out there playing. Yep. Not on the male end of yeah, it. No, you're right. Spot on. 49-39. Babich comes up Trump. She's had a fantastic quarter. Up to 15 in the game now. Dying seconds. We're into single digits. Theodore out to Zhang. She hasn't been good from long range tonight. Chance, two seconds, one. Got to go, Babbitt. She does. It's long. Oh. Ooh. And it was very, very close to dropping for what would have been a remarkable score. To, I mean, heading into three-quarter time with a 10-point margin, if she had to drop that, and I reckon she's had all of a split-second glimpse at that. But shooters tend to know where the basket is. Three-quarter time in this one. The Tigers lead it by 10. One quarter to go in the season. VYC women. A title will be awarded very, very soon. Back shortly. Black Chrome Sportswear takes pride in being the most reliable supplier of sporting apparel and team wear in Australia. Check out the Black Chrome website and leave the stress of unreliable suppliers and setbacks behind. Head to blackchrome.com.au Australia's emerging leader in custom-made jewellery, Jewel Empire is an Australian business that specialises in making unique and eye-catching corporate jewellery. To see Jewel Empire's full range of mesmerising jewellery merchandise, beautiful corporate branding and spectacular rewards and recognition awards, head to jewelempire.com.au for all of your game highlights, game reviews and scouts, as well as promotional videos, speak to the team at Custom Video Analysis Online or visit their website www.customvideoanalysisonline.com. There is nobody else that offers the services that CVAO do in the way they do. Make sure you check them out. Sporting Fine Arts vision is to showcase grassroots sport through art, merchandise and apparel. Contact them today to order an individual or team portrait, a premiership poster, or even a customised t-shirt of your club. Visit their website, sportingfineart.com.au. Down to this last quarter of the season. Who's going to take out this year's title? The best 23 and under competition in the country. And the Tigers have it by 10 as we... Count it down for season 2016. Chance to open that margin. It won't happen. Kranzberg wins it back. They've been very good off the offensive glass. The Tigers. Kolka. No. Purchase will go to the line for a couple. Let's have a look at the stats to three-quarter time. Steve, what do you got for us? Well, third quarter was all Brianna Babbitt. She's got her tally up to 15. Now 5 of 14 from the field. Uh, Monique Conti, 14 points alongside her. For Bullion, it's all Kara Tassari. She's scored a game-high 19 points to go, along with four rebounds and two assists. And she's knocked down four field goals from beyond the arc. So just on that, Tassari added six in that third quarter. Conti added five. Babich added 13 in that third period. 
Again, offensive uh, glass chance there for the Tigers guy. The uh, visiting Melbourne team have been very good on the glass tonight, haven't they? Very good in the offensive glass. I think the total count's probably evened out a little bit, but uh, the bullying turnover count uh, and the offensive rebounding's given a clear possession advantage to Melbourne in the game. They're up by 11, the Tigers. Here's Monique Conti. Pass down to Babich. Conti swings it out. Kranzberg, long three. Look good. He's good. Well, she's been very serviceable tonight, Jordan Kranzberg. Well, the danger right now, I mean, Bulleen's averaging 13 points a quarter and they're 14 down in the game. So, I mean, they're going to have to find a way offensively to get it going. And it's got to be through this girl. She's had 19 in the game to Sari. Wanted it back there, gets it back and an open look and nails another one. Wow, she has lit it up tonight. 22 in the game. That's her fifth from downtown, I think, Steve. Yeah, five of seven from beyond the arc. What a great job to carry a team on your back like that. Long miss for the Tigers. 11-point margin. Well, she's going to have to carry them a little bit longer tonight. Because they've still got 11 to make up. She has scored 22 of their 42 points. She goes again. Hesitation. Looks back. Babich with a hand. Loose. Theodore falling over at the wrong time. And it allows the Tigers to come back with it as... Monique Conti just slows things down. Oh, oh, not a good pass by Kranzberg back. And that's a uh, turnover to the Tigers. They haven't been too bad with the ball tonight. 11-point margin inside the last eight minutes of the season. Bulleen in their third straight VYC Women's Grand Final. Yet to win a title. Ball out to Tassari. Holds her feet. Flings it back with a chance. No for Moody. There's a foul as Purchase is put to the floor. And the Tigers will come up with the ball. Prized possession at the moment. There's a timeout. I think it may be the Boomers calling it. And no doubt, Guy, the Boomers will be talking about giving it one last major crack at this in the next couple of minutes. They've got to come out of this timeout with a head full of steam, don't they? Well, look, scoreboard pressure and uh, margins, I mean, they mean a lot in the, in the fourth quarter of a game. And uh, I would think if Bulleen are able to get the game to about that uh, five, six point margin with about three to play, they're going to be in good shape. You see the Melbourne Tigers there, Sarah Nobbs talking. We've just crossed over to Gary Fox. We'll go back to the Melbourne Tigers bench if we can. We mentioned uh, Joe Metcalf earlier on, who's the assistant coach. You just see her off to the left there. A star in her day, wasn't she? Yeah, what a great player. And uh, I ran into uh, or coached against Joe way, way back in the days when Melbourne Tigers had a WNBL franchise, coached by the great Ray Tomlinson. Uh, also coached her at an Opals level. And, uh, you know, she was just a wonderful shooter, a very clever player, high IQ player, a yeah. great rebounder, very good passer. So I'm sure that all those young girls are benefiting from uh, the knowledge that Joe's able to pass on. Nee Moyle, of course. I think she won the uh, WNBL MVP for the whole league back in about 1992. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, she, uh, as I said, she... Had a great IQ for the game and, and versatile set of skills. Here's Conti. Long three. Misses. I think they'll get it back, though. They will. So the Tigers putting the pressure on. They lead by 11. Seven minutes, 20 to go in this game. Conti with another long look from the corner. Nails it. And that is a dagger. If, An absolute dagger. Well, if you're in a zone, you've got to know where the shooters are. You can't give an uncontested shot. And she'd just taken one as well. 17 in the game. Nice hands in there from Conti. She's on the run here. Watch the burst of speed. Away she goes. She's fouled and she'll go to the line for a couple. She's a warrior. As we mentioned at the start of the game, Steve, she'll make her WNBL debut this year, recently signed by the Melbourne Boomers. Such an exciting time for this young kid, just 16 years of age. Yeah, that's right. I mean, coming off an absolute career, stellar year 
um, obviously going to the FIBA Under-17 World Championships, having a ripper, having a ripper tournament there, being named into the All-Star Five alongside fellow Australian Ezzy McBegger. Um, but obviously to come back to this Melbourne Tigers team in some great form and le really lead this team in, to the grand final and potentially, well, right now, a championship. And the scary part is, Guy, not that you'll get the chance in the future. I mean, tonight may be her, her last VYC game, to be honest with you, but she could actually play in this competition for another six or seven years. <laughs> Amazing to think, isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah, look, there were uh, a number of great players that went into the WNBL early, like a Shelley Gorman. Uh, back in the day, I, I, we, we've probably seen less and less of it. But uh, Talia Tupaya from Sydney Flames was a, a very good player, as we see um, Lucy Purchase knock down that jumper. And she did the, the similar thing, made a debut for, for Sydney in and around the same time, and she's been a, a very good player for them. Well, it's an 18-point margin now, and you'd think this one's getting beyond the boomers although Tassari bobs up with another two she's got 24 in the game well showing her skills there beautiful left hand layup she can hold her head high here's Babbitt can't put it away Franzberg with the rebound she'll get it back again just fell into her lap Conti out to Babbitt how many times do you think those two have passed the ball to each other this season Steve looked like a foul there on did, Monique Conti. Did look like a foul, but here again, and I criticised it earlier, but FIBA's rule change here to a 14-second count after an offensive rebound. It's too much of a chore for players at this age level. I mean, I would rather see that they're able to learn the game, throw the ball out, create another good possession of offence, except they're forced into a you know, fairly poor shot because of the demands of the clock. Uh, we've seen that a few times tonight, haven't we? Distacio. Gets it back through the paint, off the glass, misses. Kranzberg away. Conti, nice ball up the floor. Babbitt, she'll pull up surely. She does. Misses. Had a wonderful third period tonight. Here's to Sari. Turn of speed, ball forced out. Just over five minutes to go in this grand final. And from here, it's going to be a very tough task for Bulleen, Steve. They trail by 16. Yeah, and Melbourne's done a really good job in this fourth quarter, an 11-4 run, and it's been led by their stellar backcourt. I mean, by three-quarter time, both Conti and Babbage combined had zero assists. They're up to three just in this fourth quarter alone. Conti with 19 points, three steals. Moody with a miss. And the Tigers come away again. They lead it by 16. Purchase in that short corner. Good ball inside. Harley. Oh, open space. Sends it back to Purchase. Undecided. Conti. Travel called. On the drive. Score won't count, obviously. Three key players tonight. Monique Conti with 19. Brianna Babich with 15. And for the Boomers, Kara Tassari has certainly done her bit with 24. The next best score in that Boomers team is 6. Here's Tassari again. Misses on this occasion. Some holding. Well, it was a good result for Bulleen. Um, Monique needs to push away over the top of that pick. She's been hooked up on it a few times, and that was a really good luck, uh, look for Kara Tassari in the shooting form that she's in. Uh, surprising she didn't knock the shot down. She's had a wonderful game to carry Bulleen on her back so far. Sam Moody taking a seat. Fouled yep. out. Fouled out, sorry. Sam Moody. Yep. yep. Got some good applause there from the crowd. Worked hard tonight. But she won't see any further part in this game. Inside the last five minutes, Melbourne surely on their way to a title. Here's Purchase. Been good. Nice cut to the basket. Harley now. Off the Conti pass. Nice block, Laura Nelson. Opens it up for Tassari and Theodore. Out to the corner, Distacio, long three, makes it. Good great, passage of play. Yeah, great play. I mean, uh, the, the girl Nelson for Bulleen's a really physical player. She got a good block and, and started the break and a good corner three. Especially over that length of purchase too. She closed out quite well as well. Yeah. 13-point margin. Maybe it's not too late for the Boomers. Got to get a stop, got to get a score. Oh, the pass was intended for Harley. There's the stop. Turned her back on the ball. Back we go for Bulleen. If they can score here, especially from outside, 
We'll close it to 10 and maybe put some doubt in Melbourne's mind. Destacio out to Zhang. Draws a couple inside. Nelson, good turn, good scores. There's the score. Timeout to the Tigers. And the Tigers are uh, very quick to react there. The lead from 18 back to 11 and a little bit of that scoreboard pressure. Yeah, nice play by Laura Nelson. She's definitely giving them a lift right now. Love the turnaround jumper in the middle of the lane. Showed nice touch. And, uh, you know, I mean, the clock is Melbourne's friend right now. They can afford to, to take shots that they want rather than be forced into quick ones. And they've got to try and keep a balance without getting negative. Well, three minutes, 17 to go, Stephen. Dare I say it, but Bullina are here tonight in their third consecutive grand final because in their last two finals... They have stormed home in those games. Yeah, they certainly had both, obviously, at the Knox Basketball Stadium. The latter grand final, they, they only lost by one point after a barnstorming fourth quarter. One thing to be wary of in this game, Bulleen already up to four fouls, and Melbourne on zero. Could be costly as we head down the, into these final three minutes. Well, what we know, Guy, with an 11-point point, <laughs> with an 11 point margin with three minutes to go, what Bulleen can't do is they cannot allow Melbourne to score again in this game. Yeah, I mean, every bucket will make it harder for them, and they've got to be careful, as Steve mentioned, because of the foul trouble. There's yeah. that fifth. And uh, the crowd very quick to react to that one. And I reckon they've got some good reason to it. I don't know there was too much in that. Theodore certainly got a fair purchase on the ball. It's just a case of whether she brushed the arm as well. But it doesn't matter. The whistle's gone, and can, Monique Conti will go to the line for two. Yeah, you can tell Bethany Theodore is a really good, aggressive kid. Uh, hasn't had her best game tonight. Um, Bulleen's probably felt that. And just trying to get, uh, get some breaks going her way. Great rebound. Yeah, they've done it again. And another one off the offensive glass to Conti. Pull up, misses. They'll get it back again. Gee, they've been good. At the offensive end, they have got it back time and time again. Conti... Forces the ball out, Kranzberg, oh, open player inside, misses her, it was Kolka. So, probably two or three chances there to uh, just nail a basket to well, put you it know beyond that, doubt. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the amazing thing is I think that kid could have actually caught that pass. What a great athlete. 12-point margin. Boomers have to score, have to score quickly. Nelson inside again, misses, just rolls the wrong way. Two and a half to go in the game. 12-point margin. Going to be a struggle now for the Boomers. Only two and a half to go. Well, they just need to slow it down. Melbourne, use the time. All the time in the world here. Nice ball in. Babich, Kolka, been great. Misses, gets it back. Another chance. And now, just take your time. Conti out on the wing. Ball on the floor. Pull up in the short corner. Nails it. Great That'll shot. do it. That'll do it. 22 in the game for Monique Conti. And with two minutes to go, that margin's at 14. And it's a long, long way back for the Boomers from here. Tasari, wonderful tonight. Couldn't put it away. Tigers to slow it down again. Been the biggest difference in this game is that offensive rebounding. Second chance points, Bulleen 9, Melbourne 14. And then obviously the turnovers, the sloppy turnovers from the Boomers, 21 points to 6. To Melbourne points off turnovers well 45 rebounds in the game for Melbourne guy now of that 45 on a percentage split between offense and defense what would you normally be happy with uh, rebounding yeah well I mean look as a general guide you want to rebound about 70% of the other team's missed shots so, uh, so about two to one yeah a little yeah, bit around. more than that yep well of their 46 rebounds tonight for Melbourne, 21 have been defensive and 25 mm. have been offensive yeah. tonight. Cle 25. Clear dominance. And, and as I said before, that and the turnover count, the, uh, if you crunch the numbers on the, on the actual possessions, Melbourne's just had a almost unbeatable edge and that's reflected in the board. Here's Nelson. She can hold her head high this last quarter. She's been terrific. Under 90 seconds to go in the game now. It's Melbourne's. They lead by 16. Tassari hasn't stopped trying all night. Time to clear the bench, Melbourne. Yeah, get them in there. Give them a run. They're up by 16 with 80 seconds to go. 
They're on their way to the 2016 VYC women's title. They've had a wonderful season. One of their best, if not arguably their best, is with the ball right now. She's got 22 in the game tonight. Great little pass inside and in and out to Jess Harley. To Sari back the other way. Abby Zhang with the crossover dribble. Back out to Tasari. Inside the last 60 seconds. Long ball Theodore. Miss. Zhang up. But she's out rebounded by the little dynamo herself, Monique Conti. Her fourth rebound tonight. And uh, the pass unable to stick in the midst of Brianna Babich. We speak about those great players of the night with 46 seconds left. Is the uh, grand final MVP prediction? That's a good question. I mean, you'd think it's going to be out of Conti and Tasari, both in picture right now playing against each other. It's been a great matchup. Conti fouls. And Tasari will go to the line for a couple. Well, let's head over to our uh, expert who's joined us tonight. They've got to award a grand final MVP. Who do you think it'll go to, Guy? Well, I think a real difference in the game has been the number 13 for Melbourne Tigers, Perry Kalker. Yeah. I mean, I think that you could say fairly that Monique Conti and Cara Tassari have, you know, uh, cancelled each other out. Uh, Brianna Babbage got going in the third quarter, but... Uh, I think the real X factor and the difference in the game has been the, the Tigers number 13. Yeah, 14 rebounds tonight, 7 offensively. Uh, only scored the 4 points, but as you said, it hasn't been about scoring for her. It's been about getting the ball back time and time again, and she's been very good off that glass, hasn't she? Well, and the intimidation defensively as well, because Bulleen's field goal shooting is, uh, you know, hasn't been great for the game. It was woeful to begin with. It's steadily improved. But there was a lot of interior intimidation, and I think, again, she provided that for uh, the Tigers' defence. Well, it'll be interesting to see which way they go as Tasari scores and takes her total tonight to 25. No denying that she has uh, battled hard tonight. 26, in fact. And she'll go very close to getting that award too, Steve. She's been terrific. Yeah, she certainly has, obviously, in that losing team, but pretty much the only individual that stood up in the grand final, her teammates not being able to go with her. Inside the last 30 seconds, Conti with eight seconds on the shot clock. Into the corner, goes baseline. Hits the back of the backboard on the pass. And they're just about there, the Tigers. 14-point margin. Maybe their coaching staff is watching all the way from Rio at the moment. We didn't think about that when we talked about it earlier. They might be sitting up in Rio right now enjoying this. Zhang. Miss. Kolka knocks it on. And there it is. Last few seconds. And the Tigers from Melbourne have won the 2016 VYC Women's Grand Final. They take out the championship. Congratulations to the Melbourne Tigers. A wonderful season. And it smiles all round for the Melbourne fans tonight. Bulleen, also a terrific season. A great run in the finals. But they've come up short tonight. Unfortunately for them, Steve, we've mentioned it a couple of times. They have uh, been in this position the last two years and find themselves there again. But in the, uh, the best 23 and under competition in the country, to get there three times is quite an achievement. Yeah, certainly a great feat. And um, obviously a little bit of change over here and there over those three years for Bulleen. But um, Gary Fox has been the one that's been to all three. And he'd be a little bit more disappointed tonight, obviously losing his third successive one. Well, there's the Tigers. Have a look at them. Happy times. And uh, a very memorable time for those young ladies there, Guy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, championships will uh, remain in the memory for some time and uh, really pleased for them and a, and a great year and a, and a good result to actually get through to the final game, uh, beating a talented Nunna Wadding team. Uh, and as you guys said before, though also disappointing for Bulleen, but a great validation of their program. I mean, they've been to the championship game three straight years and you'd like to clearly go one step further, but you need a great program to, to face up and, and get there three times in a row. Well, let's have a look at the final stats tonight. 
for the victorious Melbourne Tigers who have won this 65 to 51. Monique Conti ends with 22 points, a couple of assists, three steals, uh, three triples tonight, played just under the 35 minutes. Brianna Babich had 15 points, had a wonderful third quarter where she added 13 and really opened this game up. And of course, as we mentioned, Perry Kolka, 14 rebounds tonight, including seven off the offensive glass. Jess Harley had six O boards as well. And uh, Jordan Kranzberg, who came on and played a, a really handy uh, 23 minutes in this game, she also took nine rebounds and had six points. For Bulleen, Kara Tassari tried all night. She had 26 points of their 51. And the tail of the tape for Bulleen is their next highest scorers were Bethany Theodore and Sam Moody, both with six points. The 19 turnovers proved costly for Bulleen as well. In the end, they were beaten on the boards by 16 as the Tigers get the win and take the title. Yeah, I mean, the stats really do accurately tell the tale. I mean, it was a possession game dominance for Melbourne and uh, their own turnover count blew out a little bit in the, in the fourth quarter, but up until that point, they'd looked after the ball quite well. Um, you know, grand finals can be a, a, a dour game, and I think the shooting wasn't particularly good. The finish wasn't particularly good tonight. Um, but there were enough episodes by Melbourne of uh, clutch shooting, and the same by Cara to sorry for Bulleen, to kind of tick the board over. Um, but look, the, the rebounding... Uh, monstrous advantage to uh, Melbourne Tigers and, and Bulleen's turnover count were the deciding factors. Well, we're going to get the presentations underway in just a moment. Don't forget, for all of our uh, Big V supporters out there, with thanks to Falcons TV, uh, tomorrow's VYC Men's Grand Final will be live on stream as well. And, of course, that's being uh, played between Melbourne and Ringwood. Yeah, Melbourne obviously have that rare opportunity to go back to back obviously with their women's program and their men's program. Uh, Ringwood has been a little bit of a fairy tale run for the Hawks, having knocked off first place Dandenong last week. But um, obviously Melbourne on home court in Oakley will go in uh, favourites tomorrow. Welcome back to the VYC Women's Grand Final 2016 with thanks to Falcons TV. There's the victorious Melbourne Tigers. They're home by 14 tonight over Bulleen. Presentations are about to start. Steve's going to uh, look after that for us. Uh, Guy Malloy, who's been with us tonight. Guy, uh, thanks very much. I know uh, busy times for you at the moment uh, leading up to the WNBL season. The Deakin Melbourne Boomers, things are looking good down there. Uh, yeah, I believe so. We've got a, a good group together and we have to remain healthy. That'll be a key thing, but looking forward to uh, the beginning of pre-season training very, very soon. Good luck with the WNBL season and thanks for adding a little bit of knowledge to tonight's commentary with us, Steve and myself. Yeah, no, thank you to yeah, thanks, uh, both you guys. My pleasure and uh, always uh, I've been a, a big advocate for what goes on here in, in Victorian basketball and uh, tonight was a great example of the talent that we've got around and uh, with VJBL finals also coming up soon, it's going to be great to see every age group, 12s through under 18s, and uh, the quality of play there. Good on you, Guy. Guy Malloy joining us tonight for the grand final, and uh, it was won by the Melbourne Tigers. Uh, Steve, as the presentations are about to start, we should mention VYC men's grand final will be live streamed tomorrow from midday. And that is the Melbourne Tigers up against the Ringwood Hawks. That's right. Uh, tip off 12 o'clock. We're live from 10 to 12. Uh, Melbourne Tigers at home at their home away from home, Oakley Recreation Centre, coming up against the Ringwood Hawks. The Hawks, a little bit of a fairy tale run to the grand final, knocking off Dandenong last week. First place, Dandenong. 
And uh, obviously Melbourne, a rare chance to go back to back in 2016 with their women's and men's program. So they'll be going into that game as favourites. And there's the announcement of the MVP of the grand final, Monique Conti winning that award. 22 points in the game tonight. Three steals, two assists, four rebounds and three triples. She's picked up the MVP award. She's had, a, she's had a big year, hasn't she? She's had a huge year of basketball. Her last uh, six weeks in the game, very, very memorable. Steve, we're going to hand the presentations over to you to look after. I'll catch up with you tomorrow out at Oakley for the VYC Men's Grand Final. Looking forward to that one. Thanks to everyone at the Big V for tonight, all of our sponsors, of course, and to Falcons TV. Here's the presentations of the VYC Women's uh, Grand Final tonight. Melbourne have got up by 14. Here's Gary Fox from Bullion. Over to you, Steve. Thanks, Justin. Uh, firstly, congratulations to the Melbourne Tigers. They certainly deserve the win. They uh, play harder than we do, and they did very well. Uh, we had a pretty good season. Probably glad we were here, but uh, we just didn't bring it tonight. We have a few things to complain. We have to thank Ray White for uh, their sponsorship. It's been awesome. And uh, without it, the stuff that Matt Maps did, the team wouldn't even be here. Also, Pancake Parlor, DigiWorld, and Arnie. So we're very lucky we got them. And uh, thank you all for coming, actually. To see this many people come to the youth league game is sensational. And to uh, Matt Casey's wife, Michelle, I guess Michelle, for all the stuff she did here is sensational. All right. Thank you. Gary mentioned a packed crowd at East Doncaster Secondary College. He wasn't wrong. Obviously, you can't see that on camera, but a wonderful crowd coming out to East Doncaster tonight. Karatasari, captain of the runners-up Bulleen Boomers. She had an outstanding game, 26 points, four rebounds and two assists. Jess, good luck. Laura Nelson, a solid performance tonight, five points, seven rebounds and three blocks. Abby Zhang. Couldn't get it going on the offensive end, one of 11, but contributed with four rebounds and three assists. Number three, Ebony Post, a DMP tonight. 14, Bethany Theodore, six points and five rebounds. 24, Talia, Talia D'Astasio with the three points. Shania Patea, 1.6 rebounds, just didn't have her usual offensive output. output. Alicia Casey, Ali Bates, two points and four rebounds. Sam Moody, six points, four rebounds, and a steal. The 2016 runners-up, Bulleen Boomers, being presented by the Basketball Victoria president, Mike Bainbridge. Head coach, Gary Fox. Assistants, Matt Papps, Brody Theodore. It wasn't to be for the Bullion Boomers tonight, a third successive Moulton Victorian Youth Championship Women runner-up banner. Head coach Sarah Nobbs, captain Phoebe Gaze to accept the championship banner.
it's tough right now in the last week and most of that we like Eagles we are not next year. Can I also say thank you to Boy for putting on a wonderful spectacle today? So thanks for us. As Phoebe Gaze mentioned there, Sarah Nobbs coached the youth team last season, was promoted to the Melbourne Tigers state champ women's side as head coach. Mentioned throughout the game that she stepped in to coach the youth side during that final series. Congratulations. Are in order. Number one, Monique Conti, 22 points, four rebounds, three steals. Tonight's most valuable player. Number two, Brianna Babich, 15 points, including 13 in the third quarter to go along with five rebounds and two assists. Beth Kett, number 11, DNP tonight, 13, Perry Kalka, seven points, 14 rebounds, including seven offensive. Lucy Purchase, three points, five rebounds and two blocks. Did it on the defensive end. Ash Dana, a real punch off the bench. Five points and three assists. Jess Harley, another one in the middle with five points and eight rebounds, six offensive. Grace Purchase, number 18. Zoe Kransberg, one point, two rebounds in seven minutes of time. Jordan Kransberg, another factor there, six points, nine rebounds. And finally, Britt Epperson, the coach, Sarah Nobbs, assistant, Joe Metcalf. have it on screen the 2016 Victorian Youth Championship women thanks to Moulton champions of this year the Melbourne Tigers basketball Victoria president Mike Bainbridge unveiling the women's 2016 champions banner to Phoebe Gaze
there you have it on screen the 2016 women's champions for Moulton Victorian Youth Championship women we'll leave you there thank you for joining us on Big V's grand final live stream special thanks to Falcons TV reminder tomorrow we'll be back at it from 11.50am for the Moulton Victorian Youth Championship Men's Grand Final at Oakley Recreation Centre between the Melbourne Tigers and the Ringwood Hawks. But for now, good night from East Doncaster.